for a 32 gallon diesel tank. Why would you buy this? Because if you have a problem like me and you keep a lot of fuel around for different reasons, I'm not really a prepper, but I like to have gas and diesel. Try to buy it when it's a little cheaper. I have a diesel pickup, I have a diesel tractor. Now I've got a diesel heater and I'm probably gonna add another diesel heater to a different part of the shop and maybe one up at the garage at the house. So you know I've been keeping like 30 gallons of diesel around and then you know 30 to 40 gallons of gasoline around just to have some extra fuel for the generators and for the cars and stuff like that. And these are you know great, They're, five gallons isn't super heavy but you know when you have to go fill them up I don't want to just go fill up one so I kind of wait till I have three or four empty and then I'll go fill them all you know take four nozzles off set them all on the ground fill them all up um, screw all the nozzles on let them leak in you know double check it fix the seal put it back in load them all back into the truck bring them home unload them of course then you have to put all your stable fuel stabilizer in each one for the diesel and for the gasoline because I'm going to keep them for three months six months before I use them sometimes up to a year and uh, so you got to put all that in each one. So it is kind of a pain. Is that this thing will make my life a little easier. When it's empty, I'll just lift it into the truck. You know, this showed up in a box that I literally carried into my garage, so it's not super heavy by any means. I'm not a big guy or a strong guy necessarily. So it was easy to lift. I can easily throw it in the back of my truck, tie it down, take it to the fill station, fill up my diesel, fill this up with 30 gallons, roll it out down some ramps, and it's portable. The things, I've, when I've been looking at these tanks, of course, Vivor makes a bunch of different styles and other brands make them too. And so, you know, which one do you choose? And you read reviews on Amazon and on the websites and see what people like and watch the videos. And so it was kind of a hard decision for me. My original plan was to get like the 58 gallon Vivor tank, or uh, I think it was actually a different brand. And I could actually use my forks to lift it out of the truck on my tractor and you know park it where I want. Problem is that's pretty stationary. Once it's on the ground, it's not moving very well. And if I want portable fuel that I can like roll to the tractor or roll to the diesel pickup or roll to a diesel heater, I've got a diesel heater that I installed because it was cold this winter here in Montana. It was minus 41. So we installed this heater here in the shop just to help keep it warm, keep things from freezing, make it kind of workable out here. And so <laughs> I put it obviously up at the window, which is like four and a half feet, five feet up. And so the cap is at like six or seven feet. So you can see my problem. I didn't foresee that obviously. Um, obviously it works well for the exhaust and the intake and it's doing the business. We put probably three or four gallons through it now, but every time I go to fill it up, I got to bring the ladder over, climb the ladder with a five gallon can, you know, pour it in and that's a pain. So this thing's gonna make, as far as fuel portability go, uh, much better. So I saved you the unboxing. But what I would suggest is when you're putting this together, it was only like three things in the box. There was the nozzle, there was the hose, and there was the tank. So the pump was already attached, uh, everything was attached, so except for the hose and the nozzle. So basically just make sure that these clamps, you have to screw this hose onto the pump here and then screw the nozzle onto the hose here. But just make sure these clamps are all tight. This hose was about to come off. This clamp was so loose here. And this clamp was loose. I mean, they're, all the clamps were loose actually, so just make sure they're all tight. Let's test the motor out. Okay, so just got my trailer battery here and we'll hook it up here. Positive and negative. And this one has a little switch right on the front here. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Okay, seems to run. Okay, let's put some fuel in it and test it out. One thing I did wanna show you guys before I fill it up is inside the cap here, if you look down inside, you can see the pickup nozzle or the pickup hose down there. It does have a filter on it. I can't see, you know, I can't really tell how big the how big the mesh is on it, but it looks like it'd filter out at least some big chunks. So that is down there, and obviously there's plenty of hose down at the bottom, so it's going to sit in the very bottom. It looks like it kind of sits up in this front corner here. So maybe if we're trying to get the last little bit out, we can tip it up that direction. Okay, so uh, I do put actually exactly five gallons in all my cans. And that I don't need to do that anymore because I'm not really pre-mixing my dirt bike fuel anymore like I used to for so many years. But I got into that habit so long ago, and that's why I do that. So we're just going to mark here what five gallons is. Five gallons is right there. Okay, we'll put five more gallons in it and then mark that. Here we get the 10-gallon mark in place. Let's go fill up that diesel heater. You know what? We can test it right now, actually. Let's just run the pump and then pump fuel back into the tank. All right, we'll put the nozzle in here. Let's turn the pump on, see what happens.
I worried about, you know, what about, what if something goes wrong? You know, you can buy this fuel line pretty much anywhere. You can buy a pump, a replacement pump on Amazon or eBay cheap. I mean, they're not very expensive at all. And uh, if this thing goes bad, I can replace this. If the hose goes bad, I can replace it. The tank, you know, that's kind of really what I want. I wanted a substantial tank that's pretty solid, that's uh, still lightweight. It's not a metal tank, so it's not super heavy. And I can lift it in the back of the truck. So hopefully this is going to be a good solution. Okay, so yeah, not super heavy with 10 gallons. easier just a little step stool and I can reach the top now and obviously that just took a few seconds to fill up so we'll put the cap back on here by the way if you buy this cheapest Amazon diesel heater just know that this cap is not super secure I mean you can just I mean, the threads just pop it doesn't make a good seal at all the threads just pop right over so don't plan on sloshing it around in the back of your truck and expect it to stay dry you know what i mean but otherwise this diesel heater actually works really well it comes with a little remote you literally turn it on and it starts its cycle you can turn up the rpm on the pump or turn down the rpm and of course that turns up the heater turns down the heat if it's pumping more fuel obviously it's making more heat if it's pumping less fuel it makes less heat but i just leave it on max and turn it on and it just starts and runs and then when i'm done i turn it off it takes about three or four minutes for it to cool down and finally shut off and uh it works really really well Okay, got the cool stickers on Amazon. So we got the gasoline ones as well because I have the same 32 gallon tank coming in a gasoline version. So that should be here in a couple weeks. We'll do another video on that. Okay, so the diesel tank supposedly has yellow wheels. The gasoline slash diesel tank has black wheels or it's supposed to come with black wheels. We'll find out, we'll find out when it comes, but this will just be a good reminder. And that's also the nice thing about the clear hose. It's kind of yellow, right? You can see that it's not gasoline. Okay, and here's the instructions. They're pretty anemic. There's not much here, but it's pretty straightforward. I mean, it's not complicated at all. 32 gallon tank, 12 volt DC pump for diesel only. This pump cannot use for gasoline. All right, 40 liters per minute, pulls 140 watts. So 40 liters a minute is about 10 gallons a minute, right? So it has some other warnings here. Don't tip it past 30 degrees or you could die. You could die, 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 you could die. Lots of ways you could die. And uh, connect it to a power supply, 12 volts. If you do extend the wiring, make sure it'll handle 25 amps. And it may get where it won't pump. And if it's not pumping, quickly loosen the cap because it may be putting too much vacuum on the tank. And the tank may be like squeezing in. Once the shutoff is released, in other words, if you're pumping, and the sh you uh, release the handle, don't let it run for more than two or three minutes. And a couple of troubleshootings here, if the pump doesn't operate, make sure it's connected. If the pump runs but does not pump, the pump can run backwards if you put the black to positive and the red to negative. If the pump can run backwards so it won't pump, okay, well that's interesting. Also, check that the suction hose is immersed in diesel. The suction hose may be bent up out of the diesel. So in other words, it could come up above the diesel level. Okay, cool. Okay, so this pump, says it'll pump 40 liters a minute 12 volts dc the motor is a 140 watt motor okay so amps times volts equals watts so 12 times 12 is about 144 so that's roughly 12 amps that it's pulling and if you extend the cable to make sure it can handle 25 amps self-priming 30 minute duty cycle that's a lot of fuel 10 gallons a minute that would be 
10 times 30 is 300 gallons, which this doesn't hold that much, obviously. So this pump should last a long time. All right, keep the fingers crossed. Okay, <laughs> I've learned that sometimes I say things and then I'm wrong. And uh, sometimes my YouTube commenters or viewers will point that out to me. And I do appreciate that. But I was thinking, is the, foot, is the footprint really that much of a savings? Obviously, cans, if you stack them beside each other like this, you can't stand anything. You can't put anything on top of them. Now, the advantage of these is, of course, you can put them on a shelf, right? And so let's just see what the difference is here. Okay, obviously you can't put anything on this either, but the disadvantage of this is you can't put it on shelf. So you, you can't really, you know, this is gonna take up floor space no matter what. But it is, I don't know, less than half. I mean, if you consider this over here, it's less than half of the floor space, okay. Okay, well, if they're really right that you can run the pump backwards by reversing the polarity, let's just see. Prime the hose. Hose is definitely full. Now, let's just reverse these. <laughs> That's unnatural. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's see what happens. Wow. Hose is totally empty. Well, there's a little bit in the very bottom there. I guess we can get that in there. So I did, when I was holding the hose up, I did open the nozzle just to make sure that air was passing through and would uh, allow all the fuel to go in. So that worked well, cool. Maybe if you wanna empty your hose, if you're storing it or something, that's not a bad idea or transporting it. Well, let's roll it out to the tractor and see how easy it rolls. I think that's something I do like a, a lot about this and I didn't think about this until just now. These bigger wheels obviously are going to roll over the irregular terrain, you know, out on the property a lot better. And my original plan was to buy the, I mean, of course, I considered the 30 gallon Vivor that's metal and it's square and has little casters on the bottom. That wouldn't have worked well at all for, you know, rolling around on the property. So I would have had to figure something else or modify it, put in a bigger axle and put on bigger wheels. And I've done that for other things, but... Uh, this is going to save me some work. What I don't like about this is the size of this handle here. Now, this may not look big in the video here. And I, I'm not a big guy, but my hand's kind of big. I wear a size 8 surgical glove, if that means anything to you. So, you know, between a large and an X large. And um, it's a little, it feels a little too big. Like when I'm grabbing it and I tip it back, I feel like, oh, I could lose that pretty easy, even with just 10 gallons in it. Well, let's just roll it out here and see how it does. Okay, another reason, you know, all the cans are coming with these EP required nozzles and uh, and I kind of get it, you know, but on one hand, but I don't get it on another hand because we got people making, you know, rules and not thinking about the consequences of what we have to use for the end user. So, you know, as an end user, this doesn't even work in my diesel pickup and here's why. You know, if, I'm, if I have five gallons of this, this is five gallon can, and I want to fill my tank. Okay, that's the nozzle. I got to put it there. And I got to hold this thing in and down like that. And then hold, you know, and that's how many pounds? 35 pounds or so, 40 pounds. And I can't even tip it up. There's no way to tip it up. So you can turn it sideways, but there's still this huge level of fuel in here that you're never going to get out. And so you either have to buy an extension for this nozzle or buy one of those extender nozzles 
which I'm sure the EPA is not happy about, you know, to screw on when you're filling it. And I get they don't want it to leak out, you know. I don't want it to leak out either. So it's just... So, so now you're buying a 20-something dollar can, then you're buying, you know, a $15 extra nozzle or an extension to go on this. And, you know, the vents, this one didn't come with any vents. I had to add this vent. So, of course, I bought a kit of these, you know, I had several in it, but that's still extra money and extra work. And it's just kind of like, come on, guys. So, you know, this is just another reason I've been, this has just been life. I've been frustrated with gas cans and diesel cans for a long time, but it's just the only thing I've known. And I think this diesel can is going to make a huge difference in my efficiency and my happiness. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I hope this video helped you. I enjoyed making it. I'm excited about getting to use these. And uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.